Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world. Wherever you are, I hope you enjoy your time, your family around you, whoever you are with, and wherever you are, I hope you are in good health and enjoying the life that God has given you and all the blessings that He's lavished upon you and your family. Uh, in this message, I wanted to share with you a dream I had about a couple of weeks ago and I believe it's prophetic uh, it is a very short dream so I'll get straight to the point after I do a short prayer uh, for myself to um, say everything and not miss anything Heavenly Father be with me and with my audience wherever they are open their hearts and minds and ears let them hear the truth let them be warned if that is the message you want to give them and let them know what to do with the warnings that you're giving them either through me or through any other means give me the right words to say let me not miss anything that you have given me in in a dream and let me not add anything that's not of you to the message that you want me to give to your people be with your people wherever they are in the world and whatever struggles they're facing in the world in this life and strengthen them meet their needs in Jesus name Amen right uh, a couple of weeks ago I had a dream uh, that I was in a room one of my children opened the door uh, and came from the garden back inside the house and as he opened the door a couple of flies came in the house and I told him to shut the door immediately because flies are coming in there were a lot of them but only uh, only two I remember inside the house and as I was looking at them I was just thinking that they are weird and different shapes uh, but two in particular there were more than two but uh, two in particular were standing out and I tried to kill them and catch them uh, I hit uh, one of them it fell down and I went to press it to kill it with a paper or paper towel or something I can't remember exactly when I pressed it my finger hurt it, it was as though it was metal and, and I thought it was just a normal fly it was it looked like one of these horse flies uh, and with big eyes green and uh, black body with green eyes and when I pressed it was hard and, and it hurt my finger my thumb and and, and then uh, I looked and I thought oh this is metallic the whole thing was metallic metal made out of metal and then I, in my dream I thought oh there are drones these are drones and they're spying on us so I destroyed it I killed it and um, I don't know what happened to the other one or what I did with it I don't remember the rest of it uh, but I do remember this part that I just told you and that's all I remember that's as far as the dream is concerned my take on that and my interpretation is that uh, the powers that be have uh, we know they have made drones we know they've made drones as small as uh, even seagulls and they are spying on people and they are actually talking about it that they are aliens spies uh, the, the, the only aliens that I know of uh, is the governments themselves uh, but uh, the government agents uh, but um, and, and the and the evil spirits uh, the aliens the way they portray and they put in 
pictures for us to believe uh, there is no such thing and uh, there uh, there are only fallen angels or evil spirits uh, whichever you want to name them makes no difference there are fallen age angels that are part of the uh, satanic uh, realm and on the earth we have of course the the powers the evil rulers as Paul refers to them I believe that they have probably managed or they are going to make Drones as little as flies. To what purpose, of course, for spying? Uh, I don't know if they are or will be able to attack as well. Uh, I don't know that. But all I can say is, uh, as I saw in my dream, I did destroy that, I killed it. It hurt my finger a little bit, but I think that just means that we can destroy them we have the power and we can destroy them so don't think that we just have to stand there and watch and see what they're doing and, and, and let them let them progress in whatever they want to do whatever evil agenda they have we cannot do that we cannot afford that and as I've said before we should not be complacent at all thinking that we just sit back and let them do whatever they want to do and Jesus will come and judge them. The judgment is already upon them. The judgment is already upon them. And it has been on them uh, for over 2000 years. Look what Jesus said in this passage of scripture from John 12 verse 27 onwards I'm, I'm reading uh, whatever is relevant now my soul is troubled and what shall I say father save me from this hour no it is for this purpose that I've come to this hour father glorify your name now I say it is for this reason that you and I are living in this time and in this era in this part of the mankind's history it is for, it is for this reason so don't ever think that you were born at the wrong time or we're just going through a bad time no we are at the right time you're born and you are at the right age at the right time at the right moment and you're in the right place God has put you in the exact location that he wants you to be now he might move you still but at this moment wherever you are that is the right place for you that is where you should be I know you probably facing problems and you are some of you probably in transition as you're moving from one position to another that is not what I'm talking about yeah you, you could be moving you know I could be moving tomorrow to another location but I don't we're not talking about that what I'm talking about is let's say for example uh, we've all seen this last two years of or three years of COVID and we've had part in it in this part of the history either uh, one way or the other we've had involvement in this uh, we've either been involved actually contracting the virus uh, some of our family or relatives or friends have had it and uh, some have died and uh, so we've in, in in a sense we've felt it we are passing through this time and uh, we might be dealing with these issues for a long time we're not talking about how long or what we're going to deal with we're talking about in this moment uh, in this period of uh, our life uh, we are in the right place so we can say uh, take this away from me this hour um, this um, 
situation because we are here to conquer those circumstances we should be more than conquerors now let me just continue by reading that uh, passage of scripture then a voice came from heaven I have glorified it and I will glorify it again the crowd standing there heard it and said that it had thundered others said an angel had spoken to him in response Jesus said the voice was not for my benefit but yours now judgment is upon this world now the prince of this world will be cast out and I when I am lifted up from the earth will draw everyone to myself he said this to indicate the kind of death he was going to die so the prince of this world Jesus says will be cast out now the judgment is upon this world now the prince of this world will be cast out so the prince of this world has been cast out and we have to stand on that and we have to believe that that the prince of this world which are the rulers the authorities the spiritual forces in the dark heavenly realms they have no hold on you they have no power because that has been cast out a power that prince the prince of all those rulers have been cast out more than two two thousand years ago and jesus says i'll draw everyone to myself and in fact he has done that and he has been doing that and he will do until for as long as uh, this life on earth goes on he will do that every single person on this planet has and if he hasn't already will hear the gospel of jesus christ and will face a point in their life that they have to choose life or death and i'm talking about spiritual life or death eternal life by accepting jesus christ as their personal savior that is a choice that every human being on this planet either have or will face at one point in their lives because he this is the promise is made i will draw everyone to myself everyone what they choose to do with that it's up to them now with my dream back to the interpretation of my dream and and what i gleaned uh, from it uh, as i said i believe the powers either have already or will at one point manage to make those kind of drones to, f to fly even inside people's houses and spy on them and so I thought I have to share this with you you are warned and don't tell me that you, there is nothing you can do about it there is a lot you can do about it even physically I killed the fly with my thumb so you can even physically do things now back to the scripture we were reading jesus says it is for this hour uh, i've come now the job that you have the family you're born in the friends and circle of relations that you have it is because of that you are in that place now before you move from that or god moves you from that position or that place or that location whatever wherever you are in in life before god moves you make sure make sure you impact those people around you make an impact a, a godly impact in such a way that they will always remember you or your actions or something that always brings to mind the um, the words of Christ or his actions or the word of God somehow linking them to God somehow you make sure that you have used that 
position that you've had or you are having to draw people to God that should be your impact somehow you leave some sort of fingerprint in your place of work uh, family wherever you are so after you've gone whether because you've moved whether you've moved on in life whether you've gone to a different location altogether different country altogether you you've even passed on and you've died people will always remember you for the good works that you've done not just good works the, the changes that you've done that will stay on for 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 as long as that place stays for as long as they will stay they will always remember and think of you that you've made that impact in their lives that you've changed that you've caused that to happen if it wasn't for you they would have had that in their lives that thing that object that job that uh, their their position uh, their knowledge their wisdom they would have had that so you need to make sure you use that position in your life to make a good not just good godly impact in the lives of people around you and don't be shy about it don't be shy about you know who you are in Christ you are a child of God and you have to act as such that's the physical realm we're talking about that's the physical things that you can do but we are more than that we're far more than that we are spiritual beings we live forever because we're children of God we're born again and we will not die there is no second death for us and we can fight this battle with the spiritual powers that we have been given as ambassadors of Christ as ambassadors of God on earth but make sure before you go to this battle to be fully armed to be fully clothed with the armor of God and also armed with the word of God let me read this from Ephesians 6 uh, starting from verse 10 finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this world's darkness and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms therefore take up the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes which has come you will be able to stand your ground and having done everything and having done everything to stand stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around you around your waist with the breast plate of righteousness arrayed and with your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace in addition to all this take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one you have to have the shield of faith believe that you can do it if you don't believe that you can't do it you have to believe it and be ready have the have your feet fitted with the readiness of the gospel of peace in another place Paul says you always be prepared to give an answer for the faith that you believe for what reason you believe in the faith that you believe you always have to be prepared if somebody asks you why you believe in the Bible why you believe in Christ or Christianity you have to have a solid biblical answer to give not just because you were born in a Christian family that's not a good reason not just because your daddy told you or your mommy told you this is the best one that's not a good reason 
Tell them about your convictions. Tell them about your spiritual conviction by the Lord. Tell them about your conversion when you actually realized that you need a savior. You need somebody to save you from your sins and wash you and cleanse you because you can't, you cannot do that on your own. Tell them about all that. I'm sure you can. Be ready and take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. This is your arm, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray also, he says, pray in the spirit at all times. Pray in the spirit at all times. Do you know what that means? Pray in the spirit. You don't have to get into a, a prayer mood and, 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 you know, sing songs for hours before you actually can pray. Pray in the spirit at all times, he says. In the spirit, not in the flesh. So it's not what you say, the big words that you use. God is not impressed by the big words that you use. God is impressed by your heart when your heart is actually moved and you're praying your tears that are coming from the depth of your heart God is impressed by those your genuinity pray in the spirit pray in the spirit is what we do you and I join in prayer while being miles away from each other, continents apart from each other, but we pray the same prayers. This is praying in the spirit. With every kind of prayer and petition, to this end, stay alert with all perseverance in your prayers for all the saints. So persevere and pray for all the saints, all your uh, leaders, be it church leaders or prayer leaders, whoever they may be. Pray also for me. And I say the same, pray also for me. That whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will boldly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains pray that I may proclaim it fearlessly as I should and that's my petition to you as well and also that whatever you do you do it in the Lord. Colossians chapter 3. Whatever you do, whatever your job is, do it in the Lord. Don't think that you're doing it for your wife. Don't think that you're doing it for your husband. Don't think that you're doing it for your boss, for your manager, for your superior at work or wherever you are. Believe and consider it a work done for the Lord don't think that you're doing it for your subjects don't think that you're doing it for anyone because that way you expect a reward you expect a payback one way or the other consider it a work done for the Lord do it for the Lord listen what Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says and whatever you do whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him whatever you do in word or deed do it in the name of the Lord do it for the Lord 
So folk, I just gave you another warning that the powers will try if they haven't already to do other things against us, against particularly the people of God, children of God. See how they assemble together themselves, the evil ones, and use the very biblical principles to fight against us, against the children of God who should be walking by faith and stand on the ground of the biblical principles. Because they unite better, they have their, in, in between themselves, they have their own harmony, they, they act because they unite better and they follow the biblical principles although they don't believe it they hate it but they follow it and yet we are still infants in Christ you know to be honest majority of people in the body of Christ they are still infants on milk and, and you know just you just you don't have to go too far just look at and read the comments that we get on the, our videos that just tells you we're still fighting um, over disputable matters that Paul says stop doing that the church is still arguing the same-sex marriage is sin or not and some churches allow it some churches still fight it try to fight it because they don't obviously they don't fight a good fight the same way the evil have put their feet down and push their agenda we don't have any agenda all we have is the Word of God and we want that to be our ultimate authority and we want that to be recognized by the powers that we have our biblical principles the Word of God which is the ultimate power not our local governments or governments they come secondary yes I understand you have to obey the law of the land and, and again that's another thing another topic churches are arguing over and, and fighting with each other that's not the point the point is when you cross the line which is the word of God then you are uh, accountable you're accountable make no mistake you will stand before God on the judgment day and you have to give an account for every word you've said and every action you've taken the more of a position you have the more accountable you are I'm going to end this session with a prayer for you and for all Christians uh, in the body of Christ that they may have power to fight the battle with the evil rulers in the heavenly realms, spiritual forces in the dark heavenly realms and the rulers and authorities on earth who are imposing their evil laws give them boldness and power and authority O Lord and give them the right words to say so they can make an impact in their lives and in the lives of others to draw people to you 
for the advancement of your kingdom and for crushing of the strongholds of Satan in their lives and in their local areas, wherever they may be. Bring down the evil powers and um, we cast them out as you put them under your feet 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, O oh Lord. We are in Christ, so those powers and those authorities are under our feet. The devil is under our feet because we are in Christ. If he crushed the head of Satan 2,000 years ago, his head is still under our feet. Give us boldness. Encourage the body of Christ spiritually and physically. Give them all their um, all, all they need. Give them all the means that they need to fight this battle. Strengthen them with the word of God and empower them with the Holy Spirit. Let them have a fire of the Holy Spirit in their lives and make a godly impact all around them on everyone they see they've had contact with and in every position that they have in life let them make a godly impact before they leave that place. Heavenly Father, the evil rulers have been planning evil agenda, evil conspiracy against your people. Let their plans and schemes come to nothing. Let them achieve nothing. And let all their people, the evil rulers, with all their evil agenda, come against each other and fall apart in Jesus name we ask all these things and I ask you that um, you continue in prayer as Paul said pray in the spirit at all times continue praying don't be discouraged if things are not going as you think they should keep praying fight this battle we fight this battle all together we are the victorious ones we are more than conquerors in all these things may god be with you and bless you and your whole entire family in jesus name until next time goodbye